Good morning, Rechavia Nachlaot, Boker Tov. Thank you very much for joining us for our daily uh, Shi'or in Chasidut, right here at 9.30. I'm very excited about today's class because up until now we've been talking a lot, a lot about the whole subject of um, challenges and tests, Avraham Avinu and overcoming and name of Elokim, the name of Avaya. But today, we're going to bring it home into several examples of how a person can take it into their own day-to-day life. We're at the bottom of page Nun Gimel, and we're continuing where we left off yesterday about the subject of the revelation of name of Avaya that overwhelms the name of Elohim, and then there's pure godliness. Three lines before the bottom. When, in order that a person should come towards revelation, the true revelation of Shem Avaya, Habilti Bal Gvul, which has no limitation, Kemoshu as it is higher than the name of Elohim. This is specifically through the tests and challenges. Unfortunately, we don't know why that has to be. That's how Hashem created the world. And we hope that from now on, there should not be any sorrow challenges, but only positive challenges, one infinitely, one level higher, one level infinitely higher than the next, than the previous one. That through the fact that a person stands by their test, against the limitations of all the concealments the Shem Elokim, of the name of Elokim. The person can come to the level of revelation of the Ein Sof, of the infinite light of Hashem, which is higher than the, the, than the limitation of nature. And it's already been explained earlier. If there would have been a, a revelation of the name of Havaya, totally unlimited, the way it is above in its in its full glory. Not through Shemalukim. The worlds and the creations would not be able to receive this great light at all. That means, we'll never be able to create the the existence of of the world and and um, different entities and limitations. First, you have to have the name of Avaya should be should be enclosed into Shem Elokim. It's not Shem Avaya itself. Only an external light, an external ray of Shem Avaya actually becomes enclosed into Shem Elokim. Only then can a person reach the level of, of revealing Shemavaya. So just like by Avram Avinu, we talked the, in, in the previous class about Avram Avinu jumping into the furnace, he thought he was going to be burnt. But it was because he was, he, that was step number one. Once Hashem chose to keep him alive, then that was a, the next step of being able to reveal the Shem Havaya and the higher level, which is above nature, to Avraham and to everyone who was watching. Just like in the test of Avraham, through the fact that he stood by the test, in other words, he went in, in the, within the realm of nature. He considered it and wanted to he was sure that that would be the, 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 the outcome. 
Only then, only through that, he came to the revelation of the Bilti Balgavul, the unlimited God, that Hashem revealed the Shem Avaya into the world. Now let's look. Now let's read on about how a person can understand these concepts in their own personal life. So too, relatively speaking, by every person with every individual test and challenge. The person stands against the, the against nature against the uh, garment of nature so a person basically you're, you're walking you're walking and you, you, you hit a brick wall you think that there's no way out it's a challenge so what do we do does a person god forbid allow themselves to stop by that brick wall or to find a way to find a way around it, to find a way to get rid of the wall. It's like, I'm just trying to remember the name of the person. There was a, a, a big singer, um, I believe it was Bob Dylan. He came to the Rebbe's for bringing a, a number of times. And I'm trying to remember his statement, the way he said it, but the Rebbe, he said, if Hashem would overwhelm the world with another flood, some professors would say we have to find a way how to stop the flood others would say that we have to find we have to learn how to swim and the rebbe would say we have 24 hours to figure out how to live underwater so in other words we have to find this this is what what what, what bob himself said but but this this is his way of explaining that the Rebbe's approach is that when there is a challenge, it's not going to stop us. We're going to find a way to make it work. We're going to find a way to grow from the challenge and to step up above the, the, the nature which might try to stop us. <speaking in Hebrew> they try to withhold us from learning Torah and serving Hashem. And you and I, every Jew, stands up against every and any thing which will try to withhold us, which will try to stand in our way. We have to be determined not to be separated from godliness, God forbid. And he should learn Torah in a real, in a real involving way, in service of Hashem. Each person according to their to their level. The person through the fact that a person stands up to the challenges, through that you can come. To revelation of a higher light, which is higher than nature. And that's the reason why the neshama came down below, as we asked earlier. Why in the world did Hashem make that the neshama should come down from such a high, exalted place down here to the world? The neshama came down into a physical, materialistic body. And in a materialistic world. Asher Mugbal Mo'od Banagata Teva, which is very limited in, in, in the realm of nature. Venir eh, venid melo, it seems to be to the person, al pichitzoniyut, hanagata olam, by the external nature of the world, shetzarich litnaheg, kach vekach, dafka, that a person has to act only in certain ways. Because they think that they're limited to the world, because we're here in the world, aren't we? For example, when someone's doing business with one another, listen how the Rebbe Rashab really breaks it down into detailed um, examples that we can relate to. 
وكمو بأسك ما ساو متان for example by the dealings of business شنت ما بنفشو it seems to be in his mind in his soul شتاريخ لاشكيمو لهاريدبو you have to wake up early you have to stay in, at work late at night be a workaholic vliot kolo yom beesek to be all day in, at work and what happens if a person will take a little time to learn some Torah a half hour an hour five minutes something ve'im yikach sha'ala atzmo if he take one hour for himself let palel to daven v'lomot Torah and learn Torah he thinks he's going to lose out that half hour. But when he, when a person realizes that true, we have to work with the world, we have to do business, we have to uh, earn a livelihood, we have to sleep, we have to eat. But all of these things are not meant for themselves. All of these details in the world are meant in order to bring us closer to Hashem. So do we need to really be head and body totally immersed into our work? No. Because that's only a tool. You can't make the tool into the main thing. When you have a hammer or an axe and you want to chop a tree down, so we're not going to say, wow, the axe chopped the tree down. What a wonderful axe. What a, a, an amazingly strong, powerful, um, glorious axe. Wow. No, it's the person who chopped the tree down through the axe. So thank you very much. We took this axe and not another one because this one is probably stronger. But it's not the axe that, that did it. It's, it's not the medium. It's the individual behind it. So the all of the work that we do in this world, tikkun olam, to elevate the world, is only a medium in order for us to be able to sit and learn Torah and do mitzvot and, and daven to Hashem for hours. That's why we're here. All of the other things are only meant to enable us, to help us to be tools, to be medium in order to help us Serve Hashem better. So that's an example of, of, of business. Here's another example of business. nidmelo. So too, it seems to the person. That he has to try to figure out different types of, of plans and schemes in order to do the work. Because he thinks that the work is... Is, is the main part. So whatever it takes, let's make it happen. Let's continue. The EF Sherlolit Nagel Piemet, and he thinks that he cannot act according to Emet truth. That's the way Torah wants us um, to act only according to truth. He thinks Shim Yadecha Piemet. That if he's going to go according to the to the true and be honest, lo yerviach he won't gain. Or he'll seed or he'll lose money. Because the 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 running of the world of nature counters truth. So he thinks when you're in Rome, act like it, act like in Rome. Aval be'emet la mito eino kein. But in truth, the ultimate truth, it's not so. The etzem hanagat haolam mitzadat small, the action of teva, of the natural way of the way the world works on of its own. Enomena gedle sektor avavoda. The world does not counter the learning Torah and serving Hashem v'lelech b'dake emet and to go in the ways of truth. O kanal, and as we said earlier. The kolal bashot va'alamot that all any concealment that there might be in the world, einam ma'alimim umastirim be'emet. They do not truly conceal over over the truth. Ki im tachli takavanahu. What's the purpose of the concealments and the challenges? She ya'amod neged kol moneo ma'kev. 
that the person should be able to stand up to the plate and say, I'm not giving in to any challenge. And to stand up above the concealments of nature. And a person should daven properly. And it should learn Torah every day. According to the establishment that he will make for himself. The Rebbe used to talk often about this concept about establishing time. Whether it's 9.30 every morning and learning Chassidut. Or later on in the day, learning the Chitat, the daily Chumash, the daily Tanya, reciting the Tehillim, learning the Rambam of the day. All that you can learn on our website, JerusalemChabad.org. We have so many classes, audio, video. It's amazing what there is out there. Today, in this day and age, there's no, there are no excuses not to learn. Even in the comfort of your own home, unfortunately, especially in this, in this uh, current situation of, of, of COVID, that we need to learn more Torah. And the fact that we're at home more needs to demand by us, needs to bring out by us a, a greater dedication to learning Torah. But then the Rebbe said that it's not only about setting aside and establishing a time to learn Torah. That's important. That to have a time to learn Torah. But then you have another concept of establishing yourself in your neshama to learn Torah. What does that mean? That means that in addition to the technical part of the time, the hour, the hours and the minutes of when you decide to learn Torah, in addition to that, you have to be totally, your entire being while you're learning should be totally into it. So whether you're learning for a half hour or an hour, whether you're learning with a chavruta, with someone else, or learning yourself, or in a shiur, or you're listening to a lecture, while you're doing that, be into it totally. It's, it's, it's funny and it's not funny, but you know, uh, kids today, they're, they're uh, learning with Zoom and it, it really, it really is not the way children should be learning. It's not, it's not l'chatchila. It's not plan A. But the children today realize that, they're, they're, that it's, it's a state of emergency. And so therefore, um, just need to, uh, to uh, stand the wave, as they say, um, or something similar to that, until hopefully it passes by soon. So when, when I look at, the, at my kids that are learning on, on the Zoom, there, there are some, there, there are some kids that, or there are some, uh, whatever that, this, some children that, that are doing all, all kinds of stuff, uh, especially the, the older ones that, uh, they, they're doing this, they're all busy. So, if you're into it, you're into it. And also by classes and, and lectures, we're listening to a class, and we should be attentive. It should be like when, when, you, when you're giving a class. So one of the nice things is to, to identify people. But if, if, they, if they close the video, then you can't see the person in the video in, in that's listening to the class. And it's hard for the person that's giving the class to be able to, to watch a, a screen or several screens that, that the, the, there's no video. So in other words, the more interaction, the more a person is into it, and you see the other person, and hopefully soon we'll be able to have classes in person. But in the meantime, let's try to be into it as much as possible. That's called kviyut, benefesh, to, be, to establish oneself. When you're there, be only there. Turn off your phone or, or put your phone on, 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 on vibrate. Sometimes a person might have things which distract them. But try hard, at least during the time of the shir, to be into it totally. And so, here's another thing. Umidvar sheker yirchak. The Torah says, we should not be involved with lies. We should yirchak, we should be far 
You should distance yourself. It's one of the only two places where the Torah says, doesn't only say don't do it. It says, Yerchak, go far from it. Don't even come even close to it. So if someone thinks that they're going to try to lie because they think, you know, that's how the world runs. So uh, if you can't beat him, join him. No way. The Torah is kihem chayenu. The Torah is our life. The Torah sets the tone for us and how we're supposed to act. And no one else besides for the Torah should set the tone for us. In general, a person should try their halachas about this. Not to act in a, in, a, in a crooked way, but only in a true way, sincere. There shouldn't be any quarter of a percentage, a fraction of, of, a, of, of, of mishonest dealings in business. Through the fact that a person stands by the test. With all of the things. He comes to a higher light, which is higher than nature. What in the simple words? The fact itself that he sees with his own eyes. When a person sees by themselves that while they're serving Hashem and, and learning Torah and doing mitzvah, davening to Hashem, that they're not losing from that. In fact, quite the contrary, they're gaining. And not only that, a person really feels more connected. The more Torah we learn, the more mitzvahs we do, the more davening we daven, it, we feel more connected to Hashem. When a person learns Torah and connects to Hashem, then the Shefa, and the inspiration that they receive from Hashem is higher than nature. They ascend above the technical dealings of the world. And according to the level of the person's avoda, service, vigyan, and effort, a person becomes higher and higher, one level above the other. Now we're summarizing the subject of the Nisayon. This is the subject of tests. Mashakatu of what it says in the verse, that Hashem, your God, tests you. What is the purpose of that? In order to come to the revelation of the infinite light of Hashem, which is higher than nature. Just like by the test of Avraham, so too by every other test which, which people in our generation have, Kanal, as I said earlier. So today we've learned about how the subject of tests is not only a hypothetical concept, but it's also something which can talk to every single person. And we have in our own lives, we have to practice this that even in little things that happen in our lives, they can be a test, and often they are. It doesn't have to be, God forbid, a, a, a negative thing. It can be a little bit of a challenge where it's, it's uh, I'm, not so, I'm not so up to tuning in right now to, to the class, a person can say. And you push yourself and you realize that it's here in order to, 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 uh, to encourage you and lift you up to a higher level then hopefully you'll, uh, every, each and every one of us will be able to stand by the tests, just like Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu is our father, our forefather, and he paved the way. Avot siman banim. The deeds of our, uh, of our fathers are a sign and a push, an energy for the children. The fact that our, cho- the, the, the fact that our, um, the fact that our forefathers had to go, th- go through what they went through that gives us the ability to say, you know what? We're not the only ones. We're not the first ones. 
been there, done that. It's happened before. And Avraham passed with flying colors. Us, being his children, also need to do our best, even in the small things in our day-to-day lives, of course, in the big things as well. And Hashem, when Hashem sees that we do our best to stand by the test, Hashem will help us that we should also um, we should also pass with flying colors and we should be successful, each and every one of us, in the service of Hashem that we are meant to do. Thank you for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you tonight, 7.30, Bezrat Hashem, right here in our Zoom room and on Facebook Live. Seriously happy. Please spread the word. Shalom, shalom.